Hey booktube, it's Friday Reads. I'm Jen, and I talk about audiobooks while drinking coffee, or ocean potion, and uh, it's freezing. I'll whine about the weather in just a few minutes, but I'll save that to the end so that if you don't want to hear it, you can skip past it. But oh, the whining, the whining I have to do about the weather. But first, let me tell you about the books I read this past week. I finished up, let's put these in order. I finished up the Tempest series, which is by Julie Cross. It is Tempest, Vortex, and Time Storm. This is YA time travel. And I had already read Tempest, reread actually Tempest. I read this in July of 2015. So I reread it, kind of listened to it. And then I uh, finished up Vortex and Time Storm uh, last weekend. And um, I listened to these on audio. They are narrated by Matthew Brown. Matthew Brown was so good. These are written in first person. Um, and the guy who is telling the story, who is the main character, is just... He's funny, he's sarcastic, he's just got a great personality, and Matthew Brown captured that really, really well. He didn't really differentiate between the voices over much, and that's a style choice by a lot of narrators. They don't do the character voices so much. Um, they might, the guys might do a higher, a little bit of a higher range, um, a lighter sound to their voices when they are doing the dialogue that's coming from a female character. But, you know, overall, you always know who is talking. And the inflections were different enough. They distinguished each voice. And so that made it okay. So overall, it, like I say, it's time travel. And so every time I put it down and had to come back to it, I had to really pay attention. It was somewhat difficult to do to listen to this book and then do something else. This is a good series if you're going to drive in a car when you... You're not doing anything but driving. You don't have to concentrate on where you're going. It's a long trip. You get on the road and you just go. Great book to listen to in the car um, because it is complicated. It's a complicated plot. And I thought that Time Storm kind of lagged at the very beginning, maybe the first 25 to 30%. It was just kind of like, come on, let's get going here. But then once it did, it was really good. So I gave each of these four stars. Then I picked up The Impossible Vastness of Us by Samantha Young. This is narrated on audio by Brittany Presley. And I read this with Lisa, my good friend, from Books and Smiles. And um, I didn't love this. She really liked it. But see, she it's because this is YA contemporary that has a lot of social issue kind of stuff going on. There was child abuse. There was a girl who had to move across the country and start a new school. And so all of a sudden she's in a great school with all these rich kids. And so there were a lot of situations going on and I don't know, it was okay. I didn't love it because of that. Um, Brittany Presley was really good. I really liked um, her characterizations, her uh, inflections to her, the emotion she gave to the story. I completely forgot about her. And I only concentrated on the story, which, you know, we always know that that is the mark of a great narrator. So I think she did a great job with that. I don't know. It was a little angsty for me. Not in a bad way. I think this is a good book, and it talks about some important things. And it has a specific audience to whom it is directed. And I think for that audience, it's a five-star book. For me, it was more like a three-star book. I think... Let's see. Yeah, I gave it three stars. So, yeah, I would recommend it. I would recommend it actually pretty highly. But I don't know that it was the kind of five-star book that I like. I picked up Change of Heart. This is by M.E. Carter, and it is book one in the Heart duology. I picked this up because it's about a football player. And it is narrated by Kirsten Lee and Jacob Morgan. Uh, Jacob Morgan does the bulk of the narration, and I didn't realize this until I, I think I actually started listening to it. Jacob Morgan is Zachary Weber. I couldn't believe it. I thought, oh, I have hit the jackpot. I can't believe it. This is going to be fantastic. And it was. The narration was amazing. Kristen, or Kirsten Lee, at the very end, she does the love interest. Um, she was fine. 
I mean, she pretty much was just the very last bit of the book. So, you know, it was fine because Jacob Morgan slash Zachary Weber did the entire book and I love him and he was fantastic. This is a story, it's a football romance about a guy who is kind of a player and he does a charity event and kind of falls for a little boy. He's six years old and this little boy is just adorable and he takes an interest in him and uh, the boy's mom has been recently widowed and so it's the story of their romance. And uh, one of the things that I loved about this book was the fact that, well, for one thing, it takes a long time for the romance to really get steamy. And I liked that. I liked that, that there was a lot of buildup. There was a lot of waiting, you know, in favor of let's not, you know, traumatize this kid with this relationship when he's lost his dad so recently. There was, um, and just a fair amount of respecting each other's wishes. I, I really appreciated that. So I love that about the book. And then when that finally does happen, it's hilarious because this is this isn't a, a young woman who had a child young and got her body back this is a woman who is i think she's 31 and she's got a mom's body and so she's afraid that this guy won't find her attractive or sexy or anything and then he he's a football player okay these books that are written about football players you immediately think oh the guy's tall he's built he's gorgeous okay this guy is a very good looking guy but he's uh and i think he's a defensive end but he's one of the ends he's either offensive or defensive end which means he's one of those guys on the line of scrimmage in football that tackles people. So he says to her, look at me. I'm shaped like a big block. I'm not a guy that's ever going to have an eight pack. You know, I work out every day, but I'm never going to have a body that looks like that because I'm not made that way. I'm not put together like that. I loved that. It was so honest. It was so real. And the whole thing, just that whole thing. I won't ruin any of it for you, but I will tell you that I loved this book. I really did. It has, um, you know, it's, it's your standard romance, but the journey to, you know, get to the culmination of the romance was really good. I really liked it. I gave it four stars and it is a duology and there is a sequel. Clearly it's a duology, but, uh, that one, has some tearjerker moments in it and I know I've read spoilers so I know what it that involves and I wasn't ready for that right just yet you know I wanted just sports romance I wanted light I wanted fun you know I was tired of all this ugh, deep social issue stuff so I went from that well I put this the sequel on hold and I went from that to Under the Lights by Shannon Stacy this is Boys of Fall series one it is narrated by Carly Robbins. Carly Robbins was okay in this one. Um, I normally like her a lot. I think she's a talented narrator, but I just didn't love her in this story. And I DNF'd the book. I didn't get that far into it. Um, and another, it's another football romance, but it's more like the football team went, graduated from high school, went on and did other stuff. And now they all need to come back and do this exhibition game for coach. You know, and so it really wasn't about a football player who's currently playing in like the NFL or some fictional version of that. And I kind of prefer that. So getting really picky on my football sports romance, aren't I? Um, anyway, so it was fine, but I just wasn't in the right headspace for it. You know, I got about halfway there and I thought, you know what? I don't want to DNF this as such, but I'm going to put it aside. I might pick it up again when I'm in the mood for it, but I just wasn't in the mood for it. So I did give it two stars because it was just okay, you know, but then I picked up the matchmakers playbook by Rachel Van Dyken. This is wingman incorporated book one, and it is narrated by Jeremy York. I laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. I thought this was football romance, but actually the main character is a guy who got drafted by the NFL and was um, nominated for the Heisman Trophy, which is a high honor in college football. It's kind of like the most valuable player kind of a thing. Um, 
And he was drafted by the Seattle Seahawks, which is the Seattle football team. It's a real team. So he's drafted by them. And then shortly, not very far into the season, he goes and knocks a kid out of the way of a car that is going to hit the kid. It's just, it's a it's freak accident. And in doing that, he tears his ACL and he can't play anymore because he has to have surgery and he's a mess. And so that's what this, who this guy is. And so he is kind of a football player, but not really. Um, Jeremy York does his voice exceptionally well. He's so good. Now, I wasn't sure I was going to like him, but I really did. He told that story so well. Oh, I was really impressed with the narration. It could not have been better. Really, really a good job. And the book is about this guy who, with his friend, who is a computer genius, uh, they're both wealthy because not only did this guy uh, get this signing bonus with the NFL, but he came for money. And he's a player, because why not? He went back to college to finish after he got hurt and couldn't play in the NFL. But he started a company called Wingman Inc. And it is a secret dating service. And basically, it's he acts like a dating coach for um, uh, girls that have their eye on a guy and they want him but they don't know how to get his attention or whatever and so he's got this whole playbook this whole thing is all worked out he and this guy that he's with have worked this whole thing out to where you know there are rules you do certain things and they get certain results and they you know they do percentages there are graphs there are charts there are all kinds of things there's extensive background done on these people uh their clients and it's secret so they they do it with a business card that they just uh kind of hand out and then if you get a hold of them then and they're expensive too so uh this guy's best friend is a girl who gets a new roommate and then there's a romance that happens. And because of this new roommate, she becomes a client. And it's just cute, the transformation that she goes through and the transformation that the guy goes through too. But what's so funny is the way that he will look at girls and he'll go, three, three, the rule of three. Why is it they always answer on the first ring? Three rings. I tell them this all the time and they never do it. <laughs> he just, stuff like that all through the book. And his best friend is pretty much at war with his business partner, who is the, the computer genius guy. So, oh my gosh, just the dialogue was so funny. I just, it was exactly what I needed. And Jeremy York was so good, so I loved it. I didn't give it five stars, I gave it four. But, you know, on a pure enjoyment, how much fun was this book, I'd give it five. Oh, it was so good, it was so good. So right after that, I picked up the next book in this series. I think there are only two books in this series so far, again, by Rachel Van Dyken. And this one is the story of the business partner who is at war with the other guy's best friend. So it's the story of their romance because, you know, it's an enemies to lovers kind of thing and you know what's going to happen but it's hilarious because they're so funny oh my gosh so good i just did not want this book to end i just i really didn't now it was narrated from two points of view because you got the best friend of the guy the previous guy you got her point of view which carly robbins did and then you got jeremy york doing the guy's point of view and this is where Carly Robbins really shined. And I think it was a combination of the right book, the right character, the right story, uh, just so well done. She's so good in this. So, oh man, narration was out of this world. It was so good. And the book was just, oh my gosh. I wish there were more, more uh, books in this series because this whole, um, way that she did the story, you know, with how funny it is. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Uh, it was just wonderful. Okay, so that was last week. And uh, now I'm going to pick up The Becoming of Noah Shaw by Michelle Hodkin. This is narrated on audio by Joe Jameson. And I think that it is kind of a follow-up series. Now, I don't know, it might be just like a companion series to the Mara Dyer series. 
But uh, so I'm not sure if this takes place after that or if this takes place while the Mara Dyer books are going on or I, I don't know what the what the timeline is, but I think it's going to be good. I liked the Mara Dyer series. I think you either love that series or you hate it. It is YA. Oh, gosh, I don't even know what to call it. It's contemporary, but it's also fantasy. So I, I don't know what you'd call it. Paranormal, maybe. I don't know. Don't you kind of shove all the <laughs> I don't know what to call it books in that category. It's got it's got paranormal elements. Let's put it that way. Now, I sampled the audio with Joe Jameson. Uh, the character of Noah uh, Shaw is British. And he's a rich kid. And so Joe Jameson does not sound like upper crust London, you know, lots of money kind of. He doesn't have that accent. He's got uh, more of a common accent. And I, I'm sure if you are from the UK, you would know what I'm talking about. So I don't know how this is going to go. We'll see. Um, and then I'm also reading The Dreamer, which is book one in the Dreamland series by E.J. Mello. I'm reading that on my iPad, and I have been reading that on my iPad for a while. I'm only 25% in, and it's a great book. It is new adult uh, fantasy, paranormal, about a girl who seems to be existing on two planes. Like when she goes to sleep, she dreams and she's in this one world and then when she wakes up she's in the real world and this is happening because she got hit by lightning so i like it i like it a lot i like the way it is developing slowly and the world is being built uh the romance is not really developing yet kind of but not really so i think it isn't going to take very long before that romance really kicks in but it's a three book series and I am reading it kind of with my friend Michaela from Michaela Eve Reads. So anyway, that is my weekend and my week last week. I would love to know what you're reading. So let me know. Let's talk about all that in comments. And okay, now let the whining commence. Oh my gosh, it's 33 degrees today, a high of 33 degrees where I live. Now, I live in a place where it would be fantastic if there were a zombie apocalypse or some other kind of apocalypse. I mean, I'm in a great area, you know? I mean, I have a river, I have a small community here of like 10 houses, and I have, I mean, we're in a really good shape. Okay, when is that ever gonna happen? An apocalypse? Seriously, I, I doubt one is coming anytime soon, so get me out of here. The wind chill today is 24 degrees. I, was, I had to stand in the wind for a little while, and I thought, ah, yay, yay, that is so cold. So the one redeeming quality about this freezing day is that the sun is shining, and it is really pretty outside, but I really want to move to the ocean where it's warm. Okay, whining is over. Let me know what you're reading this weekend. I love talking to you in comments, and that is it for now for me. So have a great weekend, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.